Welcome everyone, thank you for being here. I'm Rich Pfeiffer, Chief Medical Officer of Genesis Healthcare, and uh, welcome to the Reservoir, and thank you for joining us for this historic event. Uh, thanks to our special guests today who are behind me, but we're maintaining social distancing and making sure that we're far enough from the podium, so I'll ask all of you to respect that as well. We have uh, Governor of Connecticut, uh, Ned Lamont, and we have Acting Commissioner of the Department of Public Health, Deidre Gifford. We have Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer of CVS Health, John Roberts, and our Reservoir staff members, they're our heroes today. Uh, and resident, Jean Peters, she will be receiving a vaccine, so we'll all uh, have a chance to see all these parts of the event. Um, thank you for being here. Let me summarize our agenda. I'll make some opening, opening remarks, and that will be followed by Mr. Roberts, uh, Commissioner Gifford, Governor Lamont, and then our first staff vaccinations, which will take place outside for safety reasons so that you can see them. And I will be rolling up my sleeve first for vaccination alongside them. Uh, then resident vaccinations will begin inside, and uh, for your safety as well as those of our residents, only a few individuals will be allowed to enter the building, and you know who you are, so thank you for respecting that. So today is the moment we've all been looking for. Over the last nine months plus, we've connected uh, together in a shared struggle and shared grief as we faced, tra faced tragedy on a scale that we could never have, imag have imagined. Uh, COVID-19 has wreaked havoc in the world and those most vulnerable among us, those who live in long-term care facilities like the one behind me, they have felt the brunt of this impact. At Genesis Healthcare, we've done and continue to do everything in our power to fight this deadly virus and to protect residents and staff using all the tools available to us, and those tools have increased over the months. And yet we know that even the most stringent infection prevention practices can only have limited effect if COVID in the surrounding community is at high levels. And that's exactly what we've seen over the last few weeks and the last couple of months. It has been rough. Our residents have suffered greatly, and our staff have felt the strain and the stress in caring for residents during this pandemic and also taking care of themselves and their families. And some have gotten sick themselves. But these vials of hope have arrived. Today is a historic day and these, this vaccine is critical to our ability to end this pandemic. We have a role to play in this fight. The frontline workers and residents you'll see vaccinated today so we'll set this example for our communities and for our nation. We are leading the way and we're very excited to do that and for a, right, a brighter road ahead. So next I wanna turn it over to uh, our partners who are fortunate, we are fortunate to have with us today and first being John Roberts, Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer of CVS Health. So John. Thank you, uh, Dr. Pfeiffer. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Governor Lamont, Dr. Gifford, uh, and all of you, thanks for being here uh, this morning. This is an important day for our country, uh, for our state, and most importantly, for the residents of these long-term care facilities. They're the most vulnerable uh, part of, uh, of our country, and, and they've been the most isolated. And if you think back to the first case that was confirmed, January 31st, of this year in Santa Clara County, and we're standing here December 18th, and we have a vaccine that we're gonna begin administering today that's 95% effective and safe. It's just a, a, a remarkable achievement from the scientists that developed the vaccine to the pharmaceutical companies that manufactured it, to the cooperation between the federal governments, the states, Operation Warp Speed and CDC, coming together with private industry, it's just a remarkable achievement. And so on behalf of the 300,000 CVS Health uh, colleagues, uh, we are very proud to be part of the solution. Over 40,000 long-term care facilities have selected CVS uh, to give them vaccinations across the country. We've established over 1,100 depots that will be sending the vaccines into and we'll putting, be putting 9,000 vaccinators on the road uh, to give those vaccines across the country. And we're ready to go as soon as we get the, uh, the, get the vaccine. And you know, we're especially proud this morning to be in the state of Connecticut, uh, a very important state for us, uh, with Genesis that's a leader in, in long-term care. 
uh, in our uh, very first clinic at, uh, at CVS, and we have uh, almost 200 other clinics in the state of Connecticut uh, that will be, uh, that will be uh, administering the vaccines. So it's a, uh, it's a great day for, uh, for all of us, uh, for our country, and particularly these, uh, these seniors that are in these facilities. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, let me turn over the mic next to Deirdre Gifford, who's the Acting Commissioner of the Department of Public Health here in Connecticut. Thank you, Dr. Pfeiffer, and good morning, everyone. And thanks to the staff and residents of the reservoir for hosting us this morning. Um, this is a remarkable and a joyful day in Connecticut. Over the past nine months, our nursing home residents, families, and staffs have been devastated by this virus. Sadly, we have lost over 3,000 residents of nursing homes to COVID-19 in Connecticut. That's 3,000 grandmothers, grandfathers, sisters, brothers, friends, and beloved colleagues. This virus has taken a toll on families who've been unable to visit their loved ones on workers whose jobs were difficult and challenging even before the pandemic began. And it has robbed our seniors in nursing homes of the vital social contacts and the visits from friends and loved ones that keep them connected to the broader world. The first case of COVID-19 was diagnosed in a Connecticut nursing home on March the 18th of this year. Today, thanks to so many who have worked to make this possible, Less than a year later, we can mark the beginning of the end of this very long and very difficult year. Connecticut is so proud to be among the very first states to begin vaccinating our nursing home residents and the hardworking and dedicated nursing home workers who care for them. We are proud to say to the residents and families and workers in nursing homes, we have been beside you through these trying times, and we will be beside you until you are all safely vaccinated and your lives can return to normal. Today is a day to acknowledge and thank all of the people who have worked and sacrificed to make this day possible. Thank you to the scientists and technicians at Pfizer whose ingenuity and innovation made this vaccine possible. Thanks to everyone who stepped up and volunteered to be part of the clinical trials to make sure this vaccine was safe and effective. Thank you to everyone at CDC, at CVS and Walgreens who have worked so hard to put this program in place in record time and ensure that nursing home residents and staff were prioritized in the vaccine program. Thank you to the wonderful team at the Connecticut Department of Public Health whose commitment and persistence has never flagged over months of endless work. Thank you to our partners at Leading Age and the Connecticut Association of Healthcare Facilities and all of your members who have worked alongside us to protect your residents and workers and get us to this day. Enormous thanks to all the workers in our long-term care facilities, the doctors, nurses, nursing assistants, dietary workers, housekeepers, social workers, and more, who have done what you always do, which is to do what it takes to take the best possible care of the residents we serve. Finally, thank you to Governor Lamont, who has made sure that Connecticut had everything we needed to address this crisis in nursing homes. Millions of pieces of PPE have been delivered. Hundreds of thousands of tests have been administered for residents and staff. National Guard assistance for inspections and inventories, and the daily leadership and compassion to ensure that nursing homes stayed at the top of the priority list for all of us working on the COVID response. We can't quite take our masks off yet. We have a few more months of social distancing and mask wearing, but thank you for being here today to celebrate this remarkable accomplishment with us. We look forward to the day when this pandemic is a distant memory. Thank you.
Thanks so much for those remarks. And I want to add one additional thank you. Th thank you for your stepping in and leading the Department of Public Health during this emergency. It has been so helpful. And so now I have the pleasure of introducing the governor of Connecticut, Ned Lamont. Hey, good morning, everybody. And um, Dr. Pfeiffer, I think you said it really well. Uh, today is a big day because the vials of hope is what you said. The vials of hope have arrived in the form of the vaccine. Uh, and Connecticut is one of the very first states to have the vaccine available for folks in nursing homes. And right here at the reservoir is an appropriate place to be one of the leaders. And uh, we couldn't do it without our friends at CVS. We have a kinship there through Aetna and appreciate you're making a priority here on that, John. Let me just tell a little history in terms of how we got here and why this was so important uh, to Deirdre and I. Uh, she put it out, it was nine months ago. We had our first infection nursing home and we were hit, we were hit hard. And our nursing homes are hit hard and our parents and grandparents and friends we knew here were hit really hard. Um, we had more infections we had more complications, we had more people going into the hospital, and we had more fatalities. And uh, Deirdre and I said we're going to do everything humanly possible to make sure this doesn't happen again. And over the last six months, first thing we did was um, hired the best firm we could in Mathematica and said, tell us how we can do better. And uh, we made that public, shared that everywhere, reinforced a lot of things we were doing. We, as Deirdre said, we doubled down on PPE and uh, made sure that uh, each and every one, each and every one of you have the rights to the PPE that you need and uh, make sure we can backstop our nursing homes uh, as needed. Uh, we made sure in terms of the inspections and the disinfecting and make sure the protocols are being covered so that the nurses, residents here would be safe. And We've done more testing in nursing homes than any state in the country. And what that means is we're able to detect the infections earlier. We've got co five COVID relief recovery centers so we can get people out to keep all the people behind me safe and make a difference. And I think it has made a bit of a difference. Um, uh, eight, nine months ago, we had probably 70% of our fatalities were related to the nursing homes. And today it's lower. Uh, look, I'm not, there's no victory lap, it's 50%, but we're doing everything we can to make a difference. And as Dr. Pfeiffer said, this is tougher in some ways. We have more community spread today, perhaps, than we had back in April and May. And at the same time, we're making uh, this difference. We provided some extra resources for our uh, nursing homes, and they in turn are providing heroes pay for a lot of the nurses behind me, doing everything we can uh, for them. And that takes us back to the vaccine. Um, it was a real priority for us that uh, nursing homes, the nurses here, as well as the residents, be top of the list, prioritized in terms of getting this. What this means in terms of um, their health and safety, what this means in terms of um, seniors who uh, hopefully don't suffer the complications, don't have to go into the hospitals, freeing up capacity in our um, hospitals, making this uh, safer for each and every one of us and allow us to weather uh, this storm. I will tell you that um, we had a big surge around the country in the uh, couple of weeks after Thanksgiving, uh, but not so much in our nursing homes. Uh, there, folks stayed close to home and weren't with their loved ones sitting around that big table for Thanksgiving the way they wished they were. And we're one week from Christmas, and it's going to take a little bit longer. And I urge people to stay home. I know how tough that is for grandma and grandpa and FaceTime and looking through a window and not being able to see each other. But you're getting the vaccines today. You're going to have the vaccines again in um, a few weeks. And that means that we're going to be able to celebrate Christmas maybe a month later, but you'll be able to celebrate Christmas with each other and your family yet again. And that's thanks to the vials of hope that have arrived. And that that's why we really wanted to be here and say thanks to each and every one of you, CBS, for making this happen. Thank you, Governor. 
Thank you, Governor. Finally, I have the pleasure of introducing my colleague, Marnie Talamona. Marnie is the Regional Vice President of Operations at Genesis Healthcare, and she'll be leading us through the vaccination process today. And before I hand it over to Marnie, I want to thank you all for joining us for this historic event, and to all of our partners in Connecticut, thank you for being here. all for coming today. On behalf of Genesis Healthcare, our residents, their families, and our amazing employees, we would like to welcome you all here today. Dr. Pfeiffer, care partners, and our communities, we want to personally thank you for all of your support, protocols, policies, and procedures to help us fight this pandemic. We all know how critical the vaccine will be in our defense against the virus, but we know this alone is not a silver bullet. We need to continue to follow CDC guidelines, wear face masks, wash our hands, socially distance, and continue to get tested. And without further ado, I would like to call Dr. Pfeiffer up to be one of our first to get vaccinated today at the reservoir. Thank you. There was a question asked, and so the governor asked me to feel that right now. It's one about visitation, and I'm going to answer it more generally. I'll, of course, I'll defer uh, to, to the governor and, uh, and to Deidre to, to respond from a state policy perspective, but it's important for everyone to understand that all the precautions that have been undertaken in nursing homes in Connecticut and around the country, all the precautions that we undertake each and every day, things like limiting visitation, uh, wearing face masks, testing people on a regular basis, it, it, all these things that we do to limit the vaccine's access to nursing homes and the spread, they will need to continue tomorrow and the next day, and for quite a number of weeks, actually, until we have very large numbers of people inside nursing homes and outside nursing homes vaccinated. That's going to take two doses. It's going to take some time. So uh, whether we get back to normal in a few weeks or a few months, um, let's just be heartened to know that we're getting there, and we will get there in 2021. So. As, As I, I can't give you an exact number right now. We have very large proportions of our residents and staff who are eligible to be vaccinated. Some people need to wait until after an acute episode, for example, but very large uh, percentages of them in this facility today, but we'll have to get back to you with an exact number. And how many will be vaccinated? I'll have to get to you with that. How many cases are deaths have you had at this facility? I'm sorry, one, one at a time, please. How many cases or deaths and deaths have you had at this facility? 
can't give you that off the top of my head right now. Do you have a general? Yeah, we can't give you that right now. Are these, are these the first vaccinations in the state in a nursing home or the uh, among the first? I believe this is the first we're having in the state of Connecticut. Is that right? Yeah. I believe so. Um, it certainly is for us, yes. And we have others that are starting off uh, today and starting on Monday and going right through the next few weeks every day. Can you tell us how you're rolling this out because of the fact that you have a large percentage and how uh, you want this to go so that other nursing homes will have success as well? Yeah, good question. How do we ensure the best success in nursing homes here and around the country? Uh, the most important thing is to be talking about it well in advance of the vaccine's arrival, to be setting expectations, to be educating and engaging. People who work in nursing homes, people who live in nursing homes, have the same questions as anyone else around the vaccine. Same questions about how effective it's going to be, whether there are going to be side effects, whether it was studied thoroughly, what was the approval process, all the questions that are, that are entirely legitimate. And so we've been spending a lot of time over the last few weeks addressing that proactively, even before the vaccine's approval. And then once the vaccine was approved for Pfizer and as it's being approved as we speak for Moderna, we're updating them with information that comes from the manufacturers and from the CDC. So it's all about transparency and engagement so that when the vaccine does arrive, the day of vaccination, it is no surprise. We're not asking people for the first time. By that point, they really are on board. We're seeing a lot of acceptance rates. One of the keys to that, if I could go one step further, is having a direct involvement in, on the part of physicians who work in nursing homes. They are the trusted experts, and they're actively involved in all of our facilities right now. And one of the things that I think would make it easier because of this facility, the second dose, it's easier because people are here versus uh, that's the concern out in the public that getting people that second dose, right? Getting a second dose is going to be essential. We're going to have to figure that out. You're right. For the residents of nursing homes, uh, yes, we know where they are th usually three weeks or four weeks later, but for everyone, we're going to have to figure that out together. Let, let me move on. I know you have a lot of questions, but I want to make sure that uh, we have our, our next staff person vaccinated out here, and then we're going to get to our residents. So, uh, Marty? Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Okay, I'd like to have Frank Torado come up. Come on, Frank. He's very excited. Can you tell? Okay, next we have Zach Medeco. He's one of our, um, he works in our therapy department. Why was it important for you? 
Our third employee who will be vaccinated today is Sophia Walker, one of our RNs. in some way that you're setting uh, something new for a lot of people? Yes, because I know in, um, in terms of me being a, a minority, um, we don't want to take it because of previous the Tuskegee incident. So I know I'm setting a great example for the black community. And what about the people in the nursing home? At this time, we will be moving indoors to vaccinate one of our residents. We have asked that um, we do have a small crew that has been tested and will be coming in, and we just ask all of you to.